I admire Mr. Edward de Bono's work on lateral thinking and creativity. Recently, I've started to experiment with the visual implementation of some of de Bono's thinking tools. In today's video, I will explore some of the most fundamental algorithms of thought covered in his book, Teach Your Child How to Think. Warning. These algorithms may look simple, however, it is very hard to implement them consistently. They are fundamental building blocks of robust thinking. The traditional emphasis in thinking has always been on logic. This is what we've been drilled to do for much of elementary school and high school, and sadly often at university and at work as well. The pieces of the puzzle are given, you use logic to work out the answer. Perception is how we see the world around us. Sometimes logic can take our perceptions further. Sometimes better perception reduces the need for logic. Logic is how we make the best use of our perceptions. Creativity and wisdom are based on perception. Perception is the ability to take in many things and look at things in different, sometimes unexpected and new ways. Perception has two dimensions, breadth and diversity. Diversity is the ability to look at the exact same thing, but in a different way. The key questions to ask are, how broad a view am I taking? And in what other ways is it possible to look at things? There are two main directions for thinking, forward and parallel. In forward thinking, the key question we ask is, what follows? What can we deduce? Where do we go from here? In parallel thinking, the key question is, what else is there? This means understanding alternatives, other points of views, different perceptions, and other aspects that should also be considered. The following algorithms all target to improve our perception and support parallel thinking. Consider all factors, or in short CAF, is an attention directing algorithm. It is designed to increase the breadth of our perception. You first state the situation, then start to list all the factors that should be considered when dealing with the situation. For sake of this example, let's consider you are building a new home and looking for builders. This quick mind map is a brainstorm of different factors to consider when reviewing the offers. Alternatives, possibilities and choices, or in short, APC, is another attention-directing algorithm. It facilitates parallel thinking as opposed to forward thinking. Sometimes we are forced to consider alternatives because we get stuck with one approach. At others, we look for alternatives to find a better one. To make the best use of the APC, you must be very clear about the purpose of looking for an alternative. Here's a personal example. A few years ago, I arrived at London Heathrow at 1 a.m. in the morning. I was booked at an airport hotel, which was near the airport, but not exactly walking distance. I needed to make my way there. I had no cash, only a credit card. I had a very clear purpose. I want to get from the airport to the hotel. Here's a recap of the alternatives, possibilities and choices I had at my disposal. Get a cab and pay with my card. I tried for about 20 minutes, but I couldn't find one that would accept my card, even if I promised a generous tip. Then I considered the option of walking to the hotel, but the distance was about 2 kilometers and there were no walkways. I also thought about getting cash from an ATM. However, retrieving cash with a credit card is an expensive option. I wanted to avoid this. I thought of calling the hotel. 
I first asked if they could send their shuttle, but sadly at 1 a.m. their shuttle did not operate. So I agreed with the clerk he would pay out cash and charge it to my room account. I was finally able to pay the cab driver upon arrival at the hotel. OPV stands for Other People's Views. This is another attention directing algorithm designed to increase the breadth of perception. The two key questions in OPV are who is affected by this thinking and what are the views of those affected. OPV is always concerned with what other people actually think, not with what they should think. An OPV is about the specific views of other people. You must put yourself in the shoes of those people to think and feel as they do. OPV is not just a matter of alternative views on the subject. It is about the views held by specific people. The first step in an OPV is always to list the people or groups affected. The second step is to proceed group by group and imagine the views and thinking of each of these people. In some cases, the list of people could be very long. You have to be reasonable about this. Don't list those who are only slightly affected. Now let's travel back in time to last year's New Year's celebrations. We were considering to celebrate as an extended family. Who are affected? My parents, my children, and my wife. What views are my parents holding? They would love to meet with the kids. They are concerned about COVID. They are okay to self-quarantine for 10 days before the event. And they would rather visit us to avoid the hassle of preparations. And what are the views of my children? They would rather celebrate with their friends. And they do not want to self-quarantine. Finally, what are the views of my wife? She's probably not so happy as she will need to do much of the preparations. I'm sure she'd want to invite her parents as well. She is probably okay to self-quarantine. The final thinking tool we will explore today is called PMI. PMI stands for plus, minus and interesting. This is a perception broadening attention directing algorithm. It forces the thinker to explore a situation before coming to a judgment. PMI looks at a case and assesses the plus points, the minus points and interesting points. It is a scanning algorithm. This means it is not a matter of thinking of points as they come up and dropping each into a box labeled plus, minus or interesting. But first looking in the plus direction and noting what you see, ignoring any other points and then repeating the same for minus and interesting as well. As an example, let's create a PMI for the following proposal. The last person to stand in line is the first to get on the ride in amusement parks. First, looking in the plus direction, you may think that this rule would do away with long lines as it would not be a good strategy to stand in lines if the last to arrive gets in first. Also, people would move around more as a result entrances to rides would be less crowded. In this setup, if you would arrive at just the right time, you'd be able to get on a ride quickly. Now looking in the minus direction, you may conclude that this approach would be unpredictable. If you're unlucky, you may not get on a ride the whole day. Also, there is a risk that fights may evolve as people are trying to get to the back of the line. 
Finally, looking in the interesting direction, you may consider that people who like to mix and mingle would enjoy this setup as they could meet with more people than in the traditional way. It is possible that inverse lines would eventually evolve. To recap, today we looked at four attention-directing algorithms of thought. CAF, APC, OPV, and PMI. While it is perfectly possible to perform these algorithms with bullet point lists, making them more visual will also trigger your visual brain, adding more horsepower to your thinking process. I hope you found this quick overview of some of Mr. De Bono's most fundamental thinking tools insightful, and you will explore his work more deeply experimenting with ways to make his algorithms more engaging and powerful by taking a visual approach to their implementation. Thank you.